1920, the inventor Thomas Edison shocked the public when he told American Magazine, I have been at work for some time building an apparatus to see if it is possible for personalities which have left this earth to communicate with us. What we're going to do tonight is use different types of equipment that has been developed for communication of, of spirit contact by inventors who totally believed that they had been contacted with by the spiritual realm and we're going to try to do that tonight. The first piece of equipment was developed and spoken about in the article that I took a snippet from and explained was called a Frank's box. It'll be used in this communication. It'll be, I don't know if it's called, um, like with a tape recorder, a person is, is communicating with the tape recorder. I don't know what the operator is called. Is there a certain term? No, when? no. There's no certain term? No. Okay. Is there a code word you use to see if you're being communicated with when you hmm. use this apparatus? There's a couple different ways that I typically try to rule out if I'm talking with spirit or not. It's by asking very relevant questions. Sometimes I'll ask the same question three different ways in order to then see if I get the same response each time. Because if I get asked the same question three ways and I get three separate answers that are completely different from each other, then it's not a correlation in any way, shape, or form. Now, with using uh, different communication devices like this, I, I've used quite a few, and there's a certain name that <laughs> some of the spirits like to refer to me as that connect with me. I'm not going to say that name out loud. A couple people here do know it. I will at some point tonight during this session specifically ask for that name to see if it comes through. Um, that's more or less just for the aspect of to see if they're hanging out as well. Okay. How do you open a session? What I usually do is, as a medium, because with being a medium, I use the box slightly different than just any other investigator would do. So as being the medium, I would actually go as far as to sit here. I've been focusing on the box of it as this is a form of communication. Please use this form of communication. And kind of almost mentally saying, we're about to open the, the airwaves here. We're about to open the telephone, you know. Because we're treating this almost as a telephone, like you had said, between this side and the next. Therefore, we're opening lines of communication with the box, with this device. Do you feel you're ready to do that now? I do. Okay. One second. The Frank's box, as it turns on, it needs to warm up slightly. We warmed up a little bit earlier. We did warm it up earlier. There are two knobs to it. There's a volume knob and there's a rate knob. Now, essentially what this specific box does is it runs the radio stations, but it runs at a speed, a certain speed. The rate knob either increases or decreases the speed that it flips through the stations. Now, essentially you want to get it at a decent rate to where you're on no specific station for more than a split second. Therefore, even if you were to hit a station that would say talk radio, the words wouldn't be there long enough. It wouldn't be stuck on that station long enough to get full words or sentences from that one station. Therefore, as it's flipping through, for us to get full words and sentences, that is what we're really looking for as an indicator of, okay, we may have something here. You can kind of hear it as the frequency is going up and down in the sound. You can kind of hear how it's switching stations.
We are here tonight for communication with you. We ask that you use this here device, this box, with me as a telephone to communicate. Will someone please let me know, is there, is there anyone here that would like to speak with me now using this device? If you are wishing to communicate me, can I communicate with me? Can I please get a clear response? Yeah. Are any of the former owners of this location, of this hotel, of this building? Are you here with me tonight? To know that we're actually speaking with you, we need you to come through loud and clear. We need a distinct, loud voice from you, please. like to speak with me, please use a loud, clear voice. We need you to lower the sound of the box itself. I just want your voice to come through stronger. Unfortunately, with this, I'm hearing a lot of the radio stations, you know, because you're getting that brief, uh, uh, and it's a lot of that, a lot of static to it. And, and there's a lot of static to it tonight. I mean, we're running on AM radio frequency, not Three FM seconds. at the moment. Um, Just yeah, we're, we're trying with the AM at this time being to try to see if we can... Is there anyone that would like to step forward and say hello? Is there a woman here with me tonight? I thought I heard a female voice. Can you please speak again if so? Are there any owners of the Arnold Hotel or the Ar Arlington Hotel that would like to step forward and say hello tonight? Are you having a hard time with the box? Can someone tell me, do we need to make adjustments with the device? Flat. Yeah, let's switch it over. We're going to switch it over to FM and see if we get better results at this point. The echo that we heard of your question was because we had a mic open on another uh, computer. That wasn't, that wasn't anything, so. 
With FM, because there's more that broadcasts through the FM, it's typically a stronger signal. You can get more words, and more sounds. But it, well, I was just explaining the process that you get more words and sounds that come through, and with it, you can also hear more of the click, click, click type of the adjustment of the different signals and the flipping of stations. If there's anyone here that can communicate with me using this device, using this radio, this telephone, please tell me, is there anything we can do to make this easier for you? Can someone please step forward, speak up, and let us know, is there anything we can do to make this easier for you? try this. If there's anyone here even with me, maybe not a former owner, but just with me, or with any of us here tonight, there's a specific nickname that I've been given when I use this device, these devices. Is it possible that someone can come through and give me that name now? I'm looking for that name now, please. I'm sorry, can you please repeat that? It sounded... Hello? I need either your name or my nickname. Please. One more time, is there a former owner or current owner of the Arlington Hotel? Is there anyone here that would like to speak with me tonight using this box? something to make this work better. Can you please tell me what that would be? Oh, 
Well, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we're getting anything through this device tonight at this time. So what I'll do is I will say thank you to anybody who did try to communicate with us using this device. Thank you to anybody who tried to come through and let your presence be known. But at this point, we are going to close this session. We are going to turn off this device and ask that you follow with us and speak with us using the different devices that are here. With that, I will say goodbye for this moment. Will you please do the same? Goodbye. All right, one of the questions I'll ask because of it being a scientifically devised piece of equipment by an individual that is well known in the world. This individual was well known for these boxes. And in the article that was written about Thomas Edison, it was even mentioned, this box was mentioned in that article. If you're in areas that has very, very low AM reception, FM reception, the different things in that box is it an antenna that you were trying to communicate with? Yeah, that, okay, that's so an you antenna. you have an antenna. Then you have all kinds of interference because I went around, I had everybody kind of close off their phones because I thought they were all pulling in signals on all their phones if it's a phone call or if it's an app or anything. I felt that maybe by closing all of those other communication devices down because that signal, and it is communicating to another source, could it rest, could, could it take a little bit of a, of a breather here, and then try again after we try the other two forms of devices? Because that was one of the things that um, I had mentioned many times to people, is that we're right in between cell towers. Right. We have a, a police station next door receiving calls. We have a pharmacy next door with a satellite receiving from all places, hospitals, or wherever their, their clients are at that are going to get prescriptions they're going to pick up on Monday. Uh, it could be that we're in the crosshairs of all these signals. And being that the American Legion across has security going. So I felt that if all of those things are able to be picked up with this box, is that kind of the muddle com communication problem that might be going on? Hey. Does it affect it? Testy. Um, it's not perfect. I mean, I've seen this not work for years, and then I've seen it work. I mean, this is the same one that told you your basement was flooding. That's what I was going to ask so. you to explain, just just to explain to the people. You're, you're not on camera, but I'm not. I'm just going to keep it on the box because I think it's on the box is a very important thing this evening because we have used this box in this location before. We had a very we had a very strange experience going on. We did not know what was going on in this building because it wasn't seen to us. We could not see what was going on. And the box started warning <laughs> of the issue. It actually <clears throat> was warning us using words. We're like, what the heck is that about? There's nothing going on. I went and I said, well, I'll go downstairs and see. There was water flooding in the basement up to my knees. Well, the other thing was, too, is we were not sitting here trying to communicate with anything. I had just gotten it, I think, and I brought it over to show her, and we were sitting here, we weren't trying to communicate with anything. I said, oh, let me, let me show it to you, and let's, you know, put it on. And we were, it wasn't something like, oh, is there anybody here, and it was going past. Because I've used this, I've used other ones as well, different forms of boxes, and I found that, you know, sometimes you just turn it on and you have a conversation amongst yourselves, and let them butt in, you know, mm. or let them add to the conversation. Other times you can have the direct one-on-one, -on -one, almost like a telephone call. Yes. But there are a lot of times to where you, you, like you were saying, you turn it on, let it run. Now we're having a side conversation over here. It's running, and as you're saying something, it butts in and goes, no, whatever. <laughs> you know, you're, you're wrong because, you know, and it kind of adds to itself that way. <laughs> it, it's all... What I find is it's all on how the spirits wish to communicate at that point. And again, I believe with Thomas Edison, 
in his article written in the 1920s, revealing that he was working on what he called the spirit phone. That's what he was working on. And there's, there's some of the communication boxes that are technology, which we're going to the second table now, and we're going to, it's, and we're gonna, you're going to sit just where you're at to not disrupt, because we, we want to see if you get anything through, through here also. So do you still have your paper and your pen and everything? Okay. I do have some paper and pen, yes. Okay. And so we're going to go to the next table, and again, this is a night of contact through communication using devices made and we're not using a flashlight we're not that's used as a flashlight we're not using a um, we're not using equipment that was designed for other purposes such as an electromagnetic meter that reads electromagnetic energy off of a cell tower or EMF we're using actual communication devices that radio communication, communication through recording devices, they were actually designed for the purpose of interpreting human speech and noise and, and digitally putting it into um, a format that when you play it back you hear human voice. We're not using anything that has a malfunctioning of it by taking it from one intended purpose of use and trying to make it into a device and create a use. So the next one is called, Jim, what are, what are your recorders called? Um, I have three recorders here. One would be using a gas cam, an Olympus, in an RTEVP. And could you explain what an RTEVP is? RTEVP, uh, you can use it in real time, or you can have a six second delay on it. All right. Have you had success with these devices? Uh, in the past, once in a while. All right. Uh, it's kind of like hitting this. Okay. When you do get something in the device, have you without altering it or changing it or putting it through some other kind of an electronic uh, audio uh, transfer uh, device like um, there's like Audacity, different kinds of programs that clean up what you've gotten, takes away from what is in, the, in there because sometimes what a device will remove may have been the contact that you were looking for. But right. in today's technology, it seems like the devices are smarter than they're supposed to be. They're, they're, if they were left to their own of the recording, then you would hear what was recorded. Well, with the newer devices, the newer recorders, um, they made the filters better, where it filters out the background noise. But my, my point is the background noise may have been the communication that you missed. Could be. It's the that's same. Why, it's that's a, why I'm using three recorders. And I and I think that's a, a good a good point to make to people that are in the field that buy better and better and better devices that do more filtering and, and picture taking digitally, you know, changing and altering what the, the camera thinks isn't supposed to be there, and all of a sudden that could have been an image that was trying to come through in your in your photograph. Right. I'm not talking dust particles or hair or or smoke or or you know somebody exhales and you get something. I'm actually talking about when you have a actual picture of something, the device says, "Oh, that's not supposed to be there." So because of digital technology, it's supposed to be there. So again, using more than one recording device, we will have you conduct how you do. A contact of spirit. Okay. okay. Um, one thing I'm going to do is what I like to do is I like to is a kind of role play when I go to a location. Um, I've been to it several times. I like to try and blend in that I've been here where the spirits, if they are going to communicate with me, they know who I am, they feel comfortable with me, and they're going to communicate. So I'll try that right now. I'm going to start. 
start these recorders. And I want it to be known we're also having recorders set up recording everything we're saying during his recording sessions. You are hearing it on the stream through a device that I'm hand holding here. This is a Sony cam. And so we have another team filming on all their devices. So if we actually get something, it should show up in many different devices that we have going and running. Okay, I'm going to start here. Um, hello. In between, I'll give a little bit of space for a possible response. Hello. This is James. I come to visit. A very beautiful evening out tonight. while since I've been here. I do come to visit as much as I can. Besides me, you have a lot of visitors here tonight. David's here. Can you give me anybody's name that is here? Messages for anyone for me.
coming to the party. We're having a party tonight. Drinks. Okay. I always feel comfortable when I come here. time I was here, it seemed like Clara was around. I'm really wondering if Dave is around. and ask for a sign. Okay, James, you've done a few, like maybe a five or, or ten minute session. You've used three recorders. What would be, the, and I'm talking, if ever, anybody's listening on the site, I'm trying to talk in a very deliberate way because if there is anybody in the communication spiritual world listening, I want to try to be like plain spoken so that if they're listening, they'll understand what I'm talking about. Because some of these devices were not available in certain time frames. And some of the devices, even as of 30 years ago, weren't as developed as they are now in size, shape, and, and what they can do. So James, what would you have done with the three recorders then after you've done your session? What would you be looking for? Um, I'd be looking for 
Uh, yes. kind of look at it and yeah, a possibility that you know it is a ghost to spirit but in my opinion that can happen every different way you know you could get a voice on all three you know and you can get a voice on two so just in my opinion it's just you know hit or miss all right all right james i'm going to go to our third type of, of investigative uh, technique used, and James's group is out of Erie, and they are <clears throat> on a search of a certain bridge that he has put, I believe, 13 years of investigation into? 10. 10 years? Okay. Well, I gave you, a, I, I wasn't positive, but I, I do think that that shows that even at this hotel, most of the people participating tonight aren't first-time people here. And most of the people that have been here have had personal experiences besides having investigative experiences. So we say that this is an ongoing research facility almost in the study of parapsychology. A lot of people say paranormal. We feel because we're looking for scientific as well as vetted mediums, which is very important. Anybody can say uh, in today's world, they go online or something, but vetted mediums are very important in the field. So if you're going to use a medium, know who they are and that they're reputable. Another, and that's just, I'm saying because tonight, this is about communication and that's where a lot of communication and disembodied beings comes from is through the medium. The rest of uh, the investigation on this part of our section tonight is on a third type of investigative in individual that has gone out on investigations and her technique is using what kind of um, equipment will you be using? This is... I'm using the real-time EVP recorder. Is that what you've had most of your luck with? Um, I've had several different pieces of equipment. Um, this is fairly new to me, but I've used it enough to understand. spirit should happen to answer a question, it will be in amongst the conversation that we have. Okay. All right, so you're, you're right there on the table, and you're at a table in the front where, where we've been rotating. 
rotating in and out. And your, your experiences have taken you through the use of tape, digital, uh, Audio, online, video. Okay. Yes. All right. So you you've used cameras. I've used it all. Use. I've used it all. I've got, I've gone to audio, video. Um, they're all digital. I've used tape recorders with with the the tape, the actual tape. Um, I've been doing it since two thousand and eight. Um, I don't know. I you know I just get different responses with different types of equipment. When you have the earphones in, you're listening to what you're asking questions. Rather than just stopping, do you write down what you're hearing because of the way that the technology works so that you check it later? And is it actually, besides making a recording of everything, have you ever found that you heard something with the earphones on that wasn't picked up on the tape? Correct. I do. I, I have done that. Um, actually, when the first table was doing the Frank's box, I was listening with the recorder going, and I picked up several things, very interesting things, to say the least. And I wrote them down, and I marked it, time stamped it. Because okay. the last section will be our reveals. We're going to go over the information, and we have until midnight to do reveals, but we're going to now do an EDP session of five minutes using the real-time tape recorder. Do you want me to use the earplugs? You have to, whatever you would do that you normally would do. Well, I see it's just, you put the earphones in and it's still talking because it's a seven second delay. So I will not use the earbuds at, okay. the, time, at the time of the session. All right. But you, because we're doing it in short sessions, it gives us enough time. This isn't like a real investigators go out and they do hours and hours and then have to go through a lot of their information. We're doing five minute, ten minute sessions so that we can do a reveal this evening if we find out anything. So this is the point now where you go ahead and you do your five minute session using the real time. And the, the way that you would question entity that might be in the, in the uh, realm of the energy that you're going to explore. Well, I've had such good experience. I'm sitting at the Milo Arnold table and I feel a closeness to them, so I'm, I'm going to talk to Milo and Clara at this time. So, hey, hey, Milo and Clara, how are you doing? I've come to visit you again. I see you got an invitation to a party. Well, guess what? I did too. I hope you don't mind. I'm not going to be dressed like you are. I wonder who else is going to show up. I think the party is for Abraham Lincoln. Do you think Martha's going to come? What about his mother? I hope they show up. I really do. Can you let me know if Abe is going to show up for sure by saying yes or no on my recorder? I hear there's going to be tons of people here. You're going to have to introduce me to most of them because I'm sure I, don't, I won't remember all of them. Are you willing to do that for me? You know, I feel like this is my home as well as yours because I've been here so much. I hope you feel the same way about me. Clara, you've talked to me plenty of times. 
and I really appreciate it. I just wish I knew you in person. Because what I've read about you, you, you were a wonderful, wonderful person. What do you think? You think we should get this party going? It's Abraham Lincoln's birthday. So I say, let's get this party started. And what do you say? Thank you for your time. So come and join the party with us. Okay, Cheyenne, Glenn's going to say something. Okay, Glenn, would you like to address this? Yes. Um, James was doing his EVP session. And one of the questions he asked is, can you give me anyone's name that's here? And the name I got was Martha. Later on, he asked, any of the old owners around? And more distinctly and solidly, I got the name Martha. And then you had just asked, you wonder if Martha's going to come. Who were you trying to refer to with Martha? Abraham Lincoln's wife. Mary Todd is Abraham Lincoln's wife. Oh, you are Not correct. Martha. You are correct. Right. And also, his mother is Nancy Hanks. So, as James asked those questions, mediumship-wise, I was getting the name Martha. And you, mistakenly, somehow... Asked if Martha's going to show up. Why did I say that? Right. Because we all know it's Mary Todd Lincoln. It's right. not, we, we know that from the history. So Correct. somebody was speaking a question through you, it seems, that was going for Martha. With all three of you asking the same kind of like person. So a Martha is very important that we're going to have to find if it comes through on that tape recorders, okay? Right. All right, so our next section of what we're going to do is review the tape recorders to see if anything came on them. We're also going to then have the mediums all check their notes against each other so that we're doing the first sections. And then we're going to have, before the reveal, the cake that I went online and found that Mary Todd had made every year for Abe's birthday. I baked that cake per recipe with the help of certain individuals. I made everybody help. Because she would have had help. She would have been making that cake by herself. So we had people all do certain parts of it. And we're all going to sit down in this room with cameras on us. And we're going to take a sliver of cake and eat it. And then do that reveal to, the, to everybody tonight that's watching on our streams. Our streams are going to continue to run. You're going to hear us milling around. You're going to hear people moving around. We're, we're hoping that... You, as the audience, as being a participation in this, even if we're not on the camera view in here, hopefully maybe you'll see an energy of go through the room, not an orb, not a piece of dust. We're looking for actual something that is an energy flow that can be detected, and we will check it out if anybody goes in and says something. And, yes, you can have people that can do, like, uh, questions to us and, and post them and we'll ask our meetings or we'll ask our uh, other individuals that here, are here those questions and maybe get you some answers. So we're on to our next section and thank you and stick with us and we still have another hour or so to go. Thank you. So I would, I would continue. I don't I wouldn't let that feed die. I would keep it going. And if you want to like put it somewhere where it's getting wide shot until we start back out. Where would I knew be? you were going for Mary Todd. Where would that be? As soon as you said Martha. <clears throat> but it's <clears throat> weird because as James asked so you about this from Martha. 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 Like, like getting ready, you know. And they have something on the first session that sounds like somebody saying we were sick. What, what should I write? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Um, so we're going to keep this feed running. That way, as soon as we start back with our next session, the same link will be working, and we'll keep the uh, we'll let you see what's happening in the room. Yes, all right, all right. Stay tuned. Next session. Tune in for the next session. I'm like, who's Martha? I don't know Martha is. And you want to find some way to prop this somewhere where it's not going to get knocked off. But at the same time, I knew, you know, Mary Todd Lincoln, Nancy Hanks was the mom. There's no Martha correlation there. And then you had asked, I wonder if Martha's going to show up. Right. Why didn't I say something? Right. So that, that's the million dollar question at this point. Who's Martha? Who's Martha? Because she's hanging around. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we won't do any trip on this, but this is so that you have flexibility. Yeah. So I would put it somewhere where it's not going to keep this going. It's me, it's me. Okay. So maybe up here, but focus this way. It's me, it's me. It's me, it's me. I got all of them. I know I got on that first set of the medium that it sounds like somebody saying we were sick. Right, and it's pretty clear. And I'll play it later for them. See if they agree. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they, they saw, heard this or not over here. But that's what the real time picked up. It's almost like it was saying, it's me. Right. It's me, you know, and it's repeated itself. It's me. Hi, it's me. Do you feel good that people are here? You're trying to get their attention. Yeah. You keep asking if I'm here, and they're saying it's me. Or see, or see the other thing too. When I was sitting there, as I was explaining, there's people here. We come to visit. There's more people here. We come to party. Yeah. Yeah. We're here. We're here. We're here. That's <laughs> right. It's me. Let's go. Let's get this over with. It's always interesting. Yep. Thanks, guys. That was interesting.
Yeah. Well, you guys have not heard enough. You tell them. Do you want to tell them the you speak to Aaron? So I'd like for it to go over because do it. it's very no, much. Over. It's very good. It's very good. Well, and I think Charlie. everybody should catch it. No, I can do it. Just bring the loose the thing right here. Make him go over there. Yeah, I can yeah, get over here behind the bar if you want. Oh, he's coming over. Okay. He's coming over. Yeah. Uh, uh, it feels good to have a lot of people. Right. Joe is outlandishly honest. We're going to hear something crazy. I don't know what it is, but there it goes. Hey, Matthew? Yeah, come closer. So, uh, I think this one, Jim, do you want to see what this It may be here. I mean, on this one. Because this is still our on stream. Sure. We're still just in case we do you want to go over there or do you want me to go from there? Um, just so we can just so we can hear everything. You just want to hear. Right. Do you just want me to leave this here? I'll see what I mean. There we go. Where do you want? Because it it's ha, the interrogation room. It feels kind of like that. And it is stream of sweet feels. Stop it. And, and you can ask however you want to ask. Oh, no. AD. Oh, AD. Hang, hang off on. Off to the right a little bit. Okay, we have, we have to... Did it actually end? end? No, I pressed cancel. Over. Okay. Okay. So, what are you doing? Were you ready? Anything but where you were. Okay. Monitor. Okay. <laughs> oh. Good. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Nice lid. <laughs> Somebody's a little intimidated. Yeah. Say, so where's Mom? I'll, I'll, I'll do like, I, I would tell them a little bit about you coming in last night. Everybody was invited last night if they wanted to come early. And they could pick any room they want to sleep in because this is not a hotel, working hotel. But when my friends come, I like them to try sleeping in all the different rooms. Mm -hmm. He happens to pick a room upstairs that he likes to sleep in. We're going to tell what happened to him, then we'll explain about the room. So okay. this and it corresponds that you'll see how this fits together. Okay, I'm um, trouble sleeping last night. Last time I looked at the clock was 5 a.m. I'm laying there in the bed trying to get to sleep, and the a woman walks into the bedroom. And we said a couple words to each other. I, I don't remember exactly what they were. Uh, and I ended up asking her uh, who she was. And she said to me she was um, Nancy Hanks. I asked her what she was doing. And she said, waiting for her son. She turned around and vanishes. This morning, I wake up. I come down. I talk to Peg. I said, who's Nancy Hanks? She gets on the computer, she plugs a name in, and she shows me that it's Abe Lincoln's mother. And I had no clue. I, I had no idea. You had no Nancy idea. Nancy Hanks. That was the name. Hanks name. Never one minute register as Abe Lincoln's mother. Did you know Abe Lincoln's mother's name? Did you? I did not. Okay, did you? Had you ever heard it? proves that when somebody says something, without an education, we're all educated, we know a lot about Lincoln, we're doing Lincoln's birthday party, we happen to call that room the Lincoln Room. Mm -hmm. That's what we call it. And this entity woman shows herself to him in that room. Isn't there a picture of Abraham Lincoln behind the bed in yeah. that room? Yeah, I have, I have uh, battlefield bullets in that room. I have... It's set up like he's writing the Gettysburg Address. I have a pair of glasses and an inkwell and a, a, a pen. I have old parchment there. And what did she say to you? Our conversation at the beginning, I didn't... I, I don't remember how we got our dialogue started. But I, I, when I asked her who she was, and she said, Nancy Hanks, then I said, what do you want? Or what are you doing? And she said, waiting for my son. And see, I would have thought that was Tom Hanks. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so and at five in the morning, Tom Hanks didn't register in my mind either. <laughs> so, so were you? Were you? Uh, was this a dream? She came to you in a dream. Is that what it felt like? No, because I just looked at the clock and it was five o'clock, and I was you know trying to get to sleep, and, and it just sleep wasn't coming. So I know I was awake. Was she? Uh, did she look uh, translucent? Did you see through her? Was there light coming through her? Was she regular? There was the only time... She looked like a woman walking into the bedroom. What was she wearing? What kind of... Do you remember? Or what she looked like at all? I guess I'd have to say the proverbial woman in white kind of thing. Uh-huh. No, she, her, her, her dress was long. But, it, you know, and it happened so quick that, you know, that... I, it was just, you know, there's a woman standing at the end of the bed. And it's like, okay. And until she turned, after she said, waiting for my son, until she turned and vanished, you know, it, was, it looked like somebody had walked into the room. Interesting. Has anyone reported a person like this before? Where's Cassidy? Cassidy, are you in here? I think she may be outside. Outside. Okay. Yeah. Cassidy? Yes. He just asked if anybody's ever seen an actual apparition-looking person visually in this hotel. He just told his. Could you come in and tell? Which one? <laughs> come on in. Come on in. Just for just for his to answer his question. Right, right okay. there. Okay. Which one? So, have you seen a, a woman here before? I've seen two. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Do you have the picture? The sketch? I can get it. Um, which one came first? Smoking or the sketch? The sketch. It came first. <clears throat> um, review this? No. I came to the hotel with a group that was doing an investigation, and I was kind of, uh, I was just basically here to visit Peg. And I had seen somebody, and she was there for a moment, and she was gone, and I guess I have it going, oh, dropped. You know, so I said, well, give me a piece of paper, and I, I drew this sketch, and it was, what, from here down? Mm -hmm. She had a very elaborate hat on, mm -hmm. and um, and I finished drawing it, and she goes, Beep. she makes her excited noises, and she went over and grabbed a photograph, and who was it? Was it Merle's? Merle's aunt. Yeah. His aunt, Frances Knickerbocker. And it was the day that you had gotten the picture, wasn't it? We had gotten him from the um, his family's from his Mormons, and they're part of the Mormon um, uh, doing genealogy and documenting genealogy. His brother and his and his wife had been all over the country doing this, and they had just gotten some photographs and stuff that they had given out to the family. And there she is in her fancy hat and everything, and it's Fanny Knickerbocker. And it, was, it wasn't, like, out anywhere where I could have seen it. Fanny was born was in Linesville in August of 18, 1842. And so, yeah, she's buried in the cemetery. Uh, Fran, that's uh, J Jane Knickerbocker in the cemetery. But they lived in Linesville. She had 16 children. What was she wearing when you saw her? What color? I don't remember the color. I just remember the hat. Could you see through her? Not really. But it wasn't, like, something that was, like talking to it, like it's sitting there floating in front of me. It was just one of those things where you look up. Where did you see it? you see it? Upstairs I was sitting, was it the third? they were all doing um, like their ghost hunting or whatever. And I was just kind of getting bored. And I was on a couch that Peggy had up on the third floor. And she kind of happened to be, like the stairs come up here, she kind of would be standing right there. It was very quick. It wasn't like a flash, but I just kind of looked over and registered what I was looking at. And by the time you kind of register what you're looking at, it's gone. And who was the other one that you saw? <laughs> um, was I the only one that saw her? Mm -hmm. I wasn't the only one that smelled her, though. Right. You were on um, security for me. We had an event here. For cancer. It was cancer. Uh, was it? Yep. 11, 11 maybe? 2001. 2011. Mm -hmm. And I used to come when she had these benefits and a lot of people here um, to kind of watch over, make sure nobody goes in or out the door, you know, all the normal, and just kind of hang out. And I don't remember where everybody was. But it was Cheryl, Allison, it was mm -hmm. a lot of the normal people. We had a couple teams here, and everybody, I think, was upstairs. Mm -hmm. And they, I don't know if they were doing a tour or whatever. And I came down to use the bathroom, and I walked by a woman, and she was smoking a cigarette. And it didn't even occur to me until I walked by her, and I'm like, you can't smoke in here. And I turned around, she's gone. And 
I kind of just stood there for a second. And this was as solid as you are sitting in front of me. Solid. Completely. And I turned around to yell at her. And I'm just kind of standing there looking around. And oh, that was strange. <laughs> okay. And then they all come down. I think it was Cheryl first. that said, oh my God, this whole place smells like cigarette smoke. And they all came down. All of them could smell it. And then what was it? That night or the next day that all the cigarette burns were in the carpet? Thirteen. Thirteen cigarette burns were in the carpet in the women's bathroom right where she was standing. Like, she was on the outside because I walked by her mm -hmm. and I turned around to scold her. And there was nobody there. But it wasn't like this crazy mirage. It was it was a woman standing there. She was smoking a cigarette. Yeah. And what does Abraham Lincoln's mom say? Nancy. Nancy. <laughs> I, hope she I comes will probably never forget tonight. that now. <laughs> and if you pull it up, she looks like a young uh, Brooke Shields. Oh. And if you compare the two... And she was in your bedroom beautiful. last night. Hey, Brooke Shields was in my bedroom. Was she, was she an older woman or a younger woman in your... Did you know? I would say mid-30s, maybe. So it was almost as if she had a young Abraham Lincoln that she was waiting for. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And she and that's what we you know, thought about it earlier today. Going, you know, if, if she's waiting for Abe Lincoln, why isn't she using Nancy Lincoln? And that may have registered more being in the Lincoln bedroom, but the name Hanks. Yeah, we never thought that. Interesting. I'm interested in the reveal section that I know we're not doing yet, but I'm interested to hear a little bit more about. Um, you saw. Balloon, it sounded like you were seeing a parade type scene when I was listening to you mm -hmm. over there. And then you got this sharp pain in your eye, which I was, you know, wondering, is this an assassination type feeling that you have? Is this something that's happening at a, you know, at it, an event? It was kind of weird because it said balloon and parades, and then the pain happened, and then it was blank. There was nothing more after that. Hmm. It ended there, so... What it was. All right. Well, thanks for telling me about the Miss Nancy Hanks, not Tom <laughs> Hanks' mom, but Abraham Lincoln's mom, and then your chain smoking dead person. <laughs> she was very alive. When Just I today. Saw her. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad. First one second. And you have that sketch somewhere. Mm -hmm, I do. I do. Awesome. Yeah. I'd love to see the sketch. Well, I'll get it. Cool. And we'll keep streaming. Um, yes. And because we're going to go to the next session, so we'll prop this up somewhere and keep streaming, and then we'll. We'll do it. Thanks, guys. Sorry, Kim. Yeah, I don't think it. Will it sit? Plug it. Um, I'm gonna have to figure it out because. Uh, well, can you stream sideways? Okay, so who wants to sleep in the Lincoln bedroom tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well, Brooke Shields, 30s. So somebody that's single, maybe. That's um, I'm not really sure. Here Will this flip do you for me? See no. There? I do, but let me let me just find a place for this yeah. quickly. Put my camera on there. <laughs> How's it? Nobody Hopefully he's not too attached to his screen. Yeah, he's got it. So. He starts drawing this. Okay. okay. Is this is this in? Uh, right here is the center of the screen. Like right where my finger is. Oh, I'm stuck. Yeah. So that's what she drew. She she started drawing that. Yes. Mhm. Mm and this is. This is yeah. She said she had a big hat on, and then she said. That she had like this long neck, and, and that's what she started drawing. Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. cool. Thank I you. think it's very cool. Thanks, Matthew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it?
Do you think if I have an off-brand charger, do you think it'll charge it okay? Maybe, I don't know. It depends. Why? Did you just, is that what you have, an off-brand charger? No, I mean, I have the actual one, but somebody took over my, or I had to plug in. Oh, you can plug in. I bet my battery's charged. Plug in where I plug in. Okay. And then, um... Anybody that's done a real-time James and all has to check their um, recorders to see if there's anything. I don't need it. Yeah, she has someone else on my phone. Or if you go in there and sit and do it together in that room with the wire connection. I know wire connection. Let's get to the castle of the dream. And she started drawing until she saw upstairs with the big cat and everything so, along well, there. And then this stuff. is the picture that I had just got. Uh, it's been water yeah. damage and stuff. Yeah. Just, I printed it out. Uh, but I mean, she saw her standing up there. Well, my paper was still on the table. And she happened to be in this town living during the time frame that these people were here. And stuff because she, was, she was born in 1832. She had 16 children. She died in the 1900s. So, yeah. No, 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 this is your experience. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Lincoln thing, he had, that was his experience. Oh, yeah. I did. All right. Are you on stream at all? I want to see if you can put somebody else's on screen on that site. Where do we go? See if anybody saw they also Except like me, on my like brother and sister. This is This is wire. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter about the Wi-Fi. Everybody's just trying to get some. Here's the 5 gigahertz. That's just the camera. 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 Camera.
That's a good description. Though. We were just part. We were just mingling in a party. That's what I felt. No, for me that was later. That came later. I, I was more at the beginning with all of it. Why? We, why did we build it? Why did we come here? Why did we do this? That was the beginning part. But at the end, like you said, it was. Well, see, I, I had it almost right away because the very first thing I have on here is Lindsay and daughter. So the very first thing I had come across was Lindsay and daughter. And as I was getting that, it was almost like I said, you know, later I have the, the name Frank, a couple other things, to where that's what it was. It was like all of a sudden I heard, oh, I picked up on this conversation, Lindsay, daughter, whatever. I didn't write it, but... Lucy, Lucy, uh, Lucy or something. Lucy, 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 Lucy,
How, how far was that? How far was that into the, the end, right? end of that the conversation? Was, that was uh, midway to the last half. Okay, about the same time, I would say, because I'm, you know, it's here and this is the end. It says many changes happening. Time to move along. Yeah, and I had sale, taxes, bankrupt, money not there, left broke. The only thing I had bef between that was ill health, bad cough. That's the only thing I had between that. And then after that, I had three responses and then the answers to Peg's questions that she gave us. And I had, I had two different times when sickness and sadness was, was overwhelming. In it. Yeah, I, I only got sickness the one time with the bad cough. The sickness and taking over that sickness, that feeling yeah. of sickness. Well, I know at one point half of my face began. When you to said really right like burn. side, and everything is right yeah. side here, I got hearing loss, right ear more than the left, and then like my ear actually, like it feels like you know it was like something in there, itchy. Well, you know, the funny part not was not being I, able to hear through it. The funny part was I was talking with Joe, that was, I believe it was Joe that was filming with me. For this portion, okay, and he had documented to me. He he told me point blank. He said, as you mentioned that, I looked up from the camera, and that side of your face was inflamed. You can visibly, with your own eyes, see oh, wow. the side of my face was actually becoming much hotter and inflamed when I was describing this. You guys, as camera, did, did you notice more of, of any of our faces changing throughout? Well, the, the time that things that like his face had looked more snarled up on the right side, but just the right side. The thing was on the jaw, on the right side, right side chin. Yeah, and wound scar or, well, he or something it. in the jaw. He said he got it. He was seeing it over in here, mm -hmm. in this area. So higher up cheek, nose area. Um, I got the name Frank that came through. It just randomly, it, again, conversation, like I, I overheard someone say, Frank, um, many repairs, ill temper. I got impatient, patience, hurry, and then, like hurry up. And then I got, uh, with the, the gentleman had the ill temper, I got she was in charge. Much the same thing is this is many many is now it's hers in the mid sixes. I can't even read the writing. <laughs> many did many did something, and it's hers in the mid sixes. Is that the eighty six? Okay. I've got a question because it's been kind of curious on my. Peg asked a question of, okay, we all seem to be speaking multiple conversations going on. And mm -hmm. It seemed like in threes almost. Mm -hmm. She asked, what are we hearing more of? Male, female, a mix? What is it? I'm curious to hear you guys' responses. I definitely had two females and one male. Okay. Two males and one female. Two males and one female. And I have down here mostly male, females adding in when needed. And then I, I remember kind of laughing because it was females correcting males, but male tell stories. Yeah. I felt like there was a dominant male that, but I don't know if the female was from his, from his, him describing a female or some, somebody in his, with, within his concern or if that, and it, I think it was a child female, I, I, the blunt haircut, right? Like strawberry blonde hair and a blunt, like real blunt haircut. Well, and that brings up another good point because Peg asked us if we were speaking to somebody more specifically, kind of describe who is that person you're speaking to more specifically. You kept what? getting the the blunt haircut. I feel like a like was a older man, heftier build, a bigger guy. You know, not a lot of hair, that type of person. Okay, Karen? Um, I had a lot, of, I felt like I had stories going on. 
you know, like different events. Okay. Um, like the boys that were accused of something, and this was definitely a man that um, he was in a political position, and he was like, not my boys. Like his job was going to be affected by, he would probably get fired or brought down because his boys were stealing. So I feel like he was in a high position. Um, there was also something with, um, oh, there was death in this. There was like, um, I don't know, I feel like this was the woman because I feel like she might have seen some of these things and was, um, you know, she was the one that would help. You know, I'm not sure if she was a nurse of some sort or if she was um, volunteering. And she showed, she showed um, bodies in like a bigger room, like a bigger hospital. Right. And then there was um, the other thing with this baby that, that was a little right. strange too with the railroad tracks. Um, and the baby was um, really tight, so you couldn't see the baby's face. So right. I, I got the feeling of death with that. And um, Do you know, not to interrupt, but mm -hmm. I had trouble in childbirth. And trouble in childbirth, yeah, yeah, no, and I just feel like and that um, was very you know, probably midway through where that was. Yeah. Now, did you have anybody more specific that you felt you were communicating with that you could kind of give a description or anything of? Um, one of the things that the, the women were never together. It was like one was one was primary when when the women woman spoke and. Then she faded away, and then the other woman spoke. Okay. Um, but the man was a, a dominant. Um, I don't know if I can say a bigger guy, but definitely more powerful. Okay. Within the household and the family unit and the community, probably. Oh well, one one thing I can kind of correlate with you guys is I wrote down when she asked that question, I wrote down portly gentleman. So like a bigger, heavier gentleman. I also have dark hair parted on the side, and I actually drew a little picture. I also had, had that he smoked. And the way the picture is, is the hair is very short over here, and it's parted to this side, but it's got like that dip in the front. Mm. You know, almost like Chad he would, huh? Did you see John's picture over there? No. He's right there. On my oh, oh yeah. Well, it, it was thicker than that, though. It was much thicker than that. But it was almost. Oh, I mean, that's the picture. Yeah. Well, it kind of looks like. If, if him. John had, <laughs> if John had more hair. Yeah, all these guys seem to be bigger. I, mean, I didn't have thicker than mine. Right? Nothing would like to eat it either. And of course, I don't know if John smoked or not, but yeah, that's the picture I drew real quick because that's, I, I had to draw it. I had to draw it because otherwise it, I couldn't do it justice to describe it the way it like dipped in the front. Mm -hmm. And similar to John's, but it was like lower on the eye, on the forehead is how it dipped. Maybe it grew. <laughs> it's very popular. Or younger, he had it writing longer. are the same. I have multiple changes in mind. I have some serious changes of mind. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I can write that way. Well, for a while I, I was trying to do a little automatic writing. Mm -hmm. And I could tell the difference in some of my handwriting. As I was doing that, you could see the scribbles on the side. Mm -hmm. And then it took off into statements that went with it. And I, I like I see here, that, like when she said balloons and then the parade. It's the balloons and... Nice solid letters in here. It looks all sh everything else after that is sh shaky. How about names? I mean, I know you guys all got a lot of names. Do you want to just go through the names really quick? The only two I had were Lindsay couple. and Frank on this. Lindsay and Frank. Lindsay and Frank were the two I got during this session. Okay. And how about you? Just Ralph. Ralph, Lucia, or Lucia, or Lucy, and then when. Right when they started doing, um, when we were standing over there, Amos, I've gone, Amos twice, loud and clear, Amos. Yeah, I think that's something, because um, I, I was getting like Amy coming through, but it could have been Amos, you know. I had, I had a few names, um, 
Let me just tell you, um, I had, um, like, the Moans. I don't know, isn't that a band? That's a band, That's right? Yeah. yeah. Um, definitely, I had um, Robert. Um, I had Pearl. John did come through the name, John. Um, and I had a Camille and a Lawrence. Lawrence. The only names I had was, and before we started even, when I first came over to the table, it was, it said Clara, Clara, Clara. Very loud. Like somebody calling somebody. And Lucinda. And that was, that was the, you know, the only name that I can recall. So those two names are, what was the one, Elman? Lindsay. Lindsay. I mean, it, it sounds like we do, between the, the four of us, we have some solid collaborations. We also have very different things as well on top of it. But a lot of the experience overall seems to be the same, too, of at least at some point throughout it feeling that party atmosphere. I was going to say, we're there. We, we, we can tell that we're at a party. All of us, oh, yeah. we're at a party atmosphere. Are we all at different periods of time? All in the same room. Right. Yeah, because I'm like... Right. Were, they, were they here tonight? I mean, there are some things on here that are really funny because I could see you saying this to people like, oh, I'm getting a new sofa, or my lemon squares are wonderful, <laughs> or um, there is a... I mean, the, we had a period of roaches. I don't know if you want to bring that up at a party, but hey, maybe not. You, maybe you would. You know, but there was like... It seemed like there were conversations that... Um, that you you could talk about. And then I wanted to just say something about the sober for 10 weeks. The man you said... You yeah, I was getting a man that ill-tempered because the one that I said uh, ill-tempered... Let me see. Ill, many repairs ill-tempered. I got that he was a drinker and he would be physical when he would drink. And What time period was that? Was your, was your table? My table was... Um, I had concern about a female being abused. Yeah, 1920s, eh? Mm -hmm. so my, my table was 62 to 72. Oh. There was a realization that this, that instead of seeing, like, oh, they thought she was frail, but really seeing that she could take all that, was really strong. Abuse. Yeah. Yeah, see, there's a lot of the stuff that I got didn't seem to fit with my table specifically. Mm -hmm. it, again, it was more that party atmosphere mm -hmm. of... Like they got up and got yeah. around. Yeah, everybody's walked around mingling, talking, and we were just mingling with them is the feeling I had. I feel like it's not necessarily directed to me. That it's almost like it's these random, these... You were here the the but, okay, as if I was reading everyone's minds in the room. Mm -hmm. They're not saying it to me. It's their thought. You just sit back and look and say, That's how I feel. Really that's what it things. seems like to me. That's how it... So, that's why I have trouble um, deciding whether that's intelligent communication or is it stuff I'm just feeling that's pulling around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know what? It seems like... It's not like I feel like somebody's talking to me. It's right. like just sh it shows up there, and and I think, what the heck? It comes out of nowhere. Yeah, it's but like, like a random. How like sometimes um, one medium would be saying something, and then all of a sudden, a spirit would say something that was pertaining to the thing that the other medium at the other table yeah. was saying. I kept felt on, like I they kept were interactive, and some of it, so that could have been some of that, you know? Could have been. You know. Could have been. Nothing seemed to, which was a good thing, I thought, because I was trying to keep into my own, you know what I mean? I didn't want to be led by anything anyone else said. So I know that, the, you know, I, I like to make sure that the thoughts are there. Okay, guys. Okay. Did somebody come up with the name Romali? Ramali? Ramon. 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 Okay. All right. Now, 
I thought I heard someone say Ramali. Okay, no. thanks. All right. Ramon's pretty close to that. No, no, no. It has to be exact. We don't play that. We don't play no game. We don't play. How about Peg? How about children? Again, please. How many children? We're here. Remember? How many? Ch the person at my table. Oh, he raised his, yes, he raised his uh, wife's children. He never had any children of his own. And um, there was a, a boy and a girl, two girls and a boy. And um, after her death, then he raised their kids, too, the kids that they had. So that's all in his obituary. So, yes, there was children. They weren't his, but he raised them. Because th that whole thing was not almost like, what do you do with girls type of a thing. It could be after your wife dies how and you're left with raising the children. Yeah. How do you how do you do that? Because in that time frame, he was like almost 30 years older than her. She was younger than him. The same with the difference age group between um, Mr. Arnold and his second wife. There, she actually, after he died, got remarried and started a whole nother family because she was still young enough. Did she have did she have children or, or trouble in childbirth before? Um, everybody the, had trouble the, in childbirth. What about <laughs> with, with Millie? Did she have did she have a problem in childbirth? Oh, you're talking about the children? Of 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 um uh Milo's second wife? Yeah. Okay, Minnie, Minnie and Milo. Milo and, and, and Clara had two children, a girl and a boy. Minnie and Milo had three children, three girls. Um, there was a buggy accident on their way back from Northeast. They lived up in Northeast, and they were traveling back and forth, and the front of the buggy broke, and the 11-month-old and the a little girl that was in the buggy they thought had injuries enough to die, but they all lived. And the girls that came here, that was their grandma, their mother's mother, that came down through that line. And they told me the whole story, and they verified everything that was in, in the, the record accounts that we had. Pretty interesting. It, it did say the injuries were so severe they thought nobody would live through the accident. And at that point, they stayed at a home right near the accident because they couldn't be transferred or anything. Right. And they were traveling back and forth from northeast Pennsylvania to here via a buggy with horses, horse buggies. Now, I, I have a question for you, Peg. When I brought up about the young boy falling the bridge, okay. you asked me time frame, things of that nature. Do you know anything about that? Was it in February? They were wearing coats, but it wasn't really cold out. There was no snow on the ground, is the way I got it. There was an article that we had found, because we had gotten an EVP in 2007, cold February, I can't swim. Okay. And we documented that, and we looked up the history, and there was an accident where the ice was real thin, and somebody went down into the ice down here on this little by the bridge over there and the water is really deep over there and he did drown and it was in the, in the paper in the 19 uh, 1800s to the 1954 um herald paper yeah see the, the way it looked to me it looked more it like, happened in february yeah see it, i didn't see when i looked down i didn't see snow on the ground anything like that he might not in february which and is why i said it, it was it was cold enough to wear a coat but it wasn't freezing you know? when, we, when we've gone and asked people if they get an EVP and we check it out, that's why we look for history. That We don't look for a word like, um, was there an accident? Yes. Right. What accident? What are you talking about? You know, you don't have a connection. But when we got cold February, I can't <laughs> swim. Cold February, I can't swim. That's five words right. that we got clear as a bell. Mm -hmm. And so we started looking for newspaper articles of February accidents during the, all the different time frames. 
and then we did find an accident that was over here in the water where the ice was thin and it was really a cold February and the person couldn't swim. All of that came around. Right. But I'm telling you that that isn't always the case that you're going to find that history. We've been lucky enough that our things have gone along with history. Right. And we haven't made the history up to fit the, the words. Yeah, and there's there's probably no notification with that. like Because the way I had it was the young boy fell from the bridge. Friends came here looking for help, but it was too late. See, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have... In the newspaper articles that you get that are online, you get the clips and the little stories. Yeah. And you don't get follow-ups a lot of times because... You'd have to go into more archivals. I've gone across to the Historical Society, and she says they have all the old newspapers, but they don't allow you to go through them. What they allow you to do is go through. They taped them. They don't have them where you can stop right. and look at them. You have to go through all of the papers till you find the paper you're looking for on the, on the roll films. Yeah. So to do that, we joined <laughs> because we're going to try to find out more stuff. Right. So Cheyenne and I joined the Historical Society and we're on a quest to try to see more information okay. out of the newspapers. Because right. yeah. we didn't know there was all these other owners that were lease owners. It went into bankruptcy. I had bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah. When it was a, with the McIntyres went into bankruptcy. It went to sheriff's sale. CB, uh, Britain was the sheriff. He was proprietor of it until they could find a buyer. The Louisa Chambers bought it out of the sheriff's sale. She couldn't make a go of it, and she they, she was foreclosed on. And then it came back around through until it finally got back to Joseph McGuire. See, I was telling them I had sale, taxes, bankrupt, money not there, left broke. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That is exactly what did happen. And see, I, I put names over here that I have history over there out of the courthouse. Right. I, I documented everything out of the courthouse. And then the girls even did a better job because they gave me some all the sales records out of the newspapers, they took all the clips of every time it went up for sale. Okay. And when it went for sale one time, widow has to sell. There was a, a, a widow that had to sell. I need to know the name because I don't know that section of the history. Right. It was Very called cool. the McIntyre House then. Okay. Have you ever heard of um, a woman that was um, I'm not sure what floor, to be honest with you, it would have been upstairs, but do you have sheer white curtains in any room, like sheer white? That... When I got the building, I, I'll tell you, the curtains and stuff that were on it were from years of abuse and not doing anything upstairs, dirty, horrible, you know, we had a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do. If you think of your memories of things of a hotel that was up and running, you may say that those thoughts are coming to you because maybe the entity that's talking to you is talking in that time frame. I feel like it was now. Hmm. Mo most of the curtains that I have up there right now, I have shears on all the windows with block out, uh, blockouts on the interiors to keep the heat and the sun and everything so the building can kind of stay decent. But I have shears on all the windows. Because yeah. I can do And you'll see it, on this, I mean, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but you'll hear her talking about it. She watched somebody swoosh into the room. And she said, what does she look like? And she said she had like this dress that was kind of just flowy yeah. and swooshed into the room. Mm -hmm. it, they were just doing, doing a tour about 6 o'clock in the evening about what they were going to do that night. So, I, say, I just think it was odd that it was just, um, that it just was set tonight. That there was like somebody here.
I have the live stream on there. It says old hotel, and it's a walkthrough of this place. Okay. And that's where you're. That's where it is. Okay. That's what you're talking about. All right. So go in there. We get to the point where the girl upstairs says something just went into the room. She saw a woman yeah. just go flying or going into the room. Yeah. She saw it. It's it's her it's her thing. Nobody else had. It. going to have cake for Lincoln. We have one other group that's going to come out and tell their uh, reveal on their tape recorders. So did anything come through on all of yours? Did, did the same thing, same word, same time? We had some very similar connections, but nothing that was dead on. Okay. I don't believe, I mean, what do you... Other than the communal party atmosphere. Right, the, the fact that it was a party atmosphere, multiple conversations throughout the room. Right, so I did. Facial stuff. Oh, yeah, the right sided stuff. Oh, yeah. He's got that. Okay, and the heat that happened. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I have the cake cut, and they're going to come in, and then we'll just have our cake and call it a night, and then welcome you sometime back, and hopefully everybody that watched tonight enjoyed what we tried to do. Okay. Keep on going. It's here. You guys are here. Okay. Keep going. Okay, gonna keep all these for you. Thank you. 
As you get whacked in the head with the boom mic. <laughs> Brian has great faith and trust in this former student system. Let us know when you guys are ready. Everybody rolling? rolling? Mm -hmm. We're good? Okay, so the first session we had during the EVP communication type session was the Frank Spock session. I'll be honest, during it, I didn't get a whole lot from it personally with it. Uh, we had problems with it trying to pick up radio stations, frequencies, trying to get that voice through. One thing that came through solid, I had two things that came through pretty solid. One, the first was the name Jonathan. Full name Jonathan, it blurted out, it was quick, it was done. The other thing was a female saying the word engine, but that's all I have. I don't have anything to go with that, so to me that doesn't correlate a conversation. Okay. You know, the one thing that threw me with the Jonathan was I didn't even realize it. The table I was sitting at, because what I did was she had this paper out with the names of the owner's that that table is dedicated to. Okay. What I did was, as soon as I walked over, this was already flipped to the back when we started the session, so I began to write on the back. I had Jonathan Engine. Flipped over and looked. The gentleman that owned the place that was dedicated to the table I was at was John Tomchak. That's what I had. Did you guys get anything during the Frank's Box session? I really didn't. I did. Okay. Um, the only... That's the only EVP session I got through. Um, you'd asked a question, Mrs. Arnold, are you here with us tonight? Do you remember that? And I stamped it at four minutes. She said yes. At 4.08, she said, it's me. It's okay. me. And at 5.35, she said, hi. The second question that I picked up on is, you said, is there someone here, not a former owner of the hotel, but here with me tonight? And at 7.53, I got the name Lincoln. At 8.40, you said, I'm looking for that name, please. And I hear Albert. Something to that effect, Albert. Okay. I'll, I'll say, though, it. unfortunately, though, um, at that I remember that because at that time I was questioning because I've used a lot of those boxes, different types of boxes, and there's one that there's a spirit that likes to come through and speak with me a lot through the box, kind of as like a translator, so to speak, or a go between. And there's a certain name that he likes to throw at me, okay, and I, I can't reveal it because it's not very um, user-friendly. Okay. Okay. But out of curiosity, it's a surefire way to know if you're talking to somebody because those words are not allowed over 
FCC transmissions right. in any way, shape, or form. Right. So that's what I was asking for was for something to come through to give me that correlation of yes, somebody's able to get through on this, and nothing. It, it didn't come through because Albert's not even close to. Right. I got. I got <laughs> Albert. Was. So yeah, unfortunately, kind of like the engine from the female. Right. Right. It, it doesn't, doesn't give us direct correlation. Well, again, at eight fifty four, the name Lincoln came across again, and you said, "Is there anyone here that would like to talk to me to end your session?" Right. And at ten ten, it said Abe. Yeah. See, and unfortunately, I didn't hear that during the live. Now, was that his session? Or? That, was that, his? that was during my that session during with the box. The, All right. the Frank's box. Okay, so with your session, James, what were you able to come up with? Um, the, when, when you were asking, I think it was at, at the end of the session, um, when you were asking about, um, I think I said, is there anybody here? Um, now we went through it, and I let you listen. Right. Um, it sounded like there's something there, and and you hear at, at the end of the two the two words, you know, like Artha. I'm hearing the, okay, but in the beginning, I'm not hearing Mar. I'm hearing Burr instead of Mar. So it kind of basically sounds kind of like Bertha instead of Martha. Yeah, see, I'll go ahead and break into that because that's that was really strange to me. You had asked earlier on, uh, because during your session and during your session, I kind of sat back and, you know, still open to communication from the other side as it came to me, but I just jotted it down on the paper. You had asked anyone's name. Can, can you give me anyone's name that's here? And I had Martha, but it was kind of faint to me. And then you said, any old owners around? And real strong, distinct, Martha is what I heard. Right. So then that EVP would correlate with that. But not only that, the funny part with me that really threw me was as you were doing your session, you had said, I wonder if Martha is going to show up. Yeah. Now, we talked about this right after, and you had said you were actually looking for Mary Todd. Right. 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 But somehow Martha came out of your mouth. But not only that, but before I even did my session, I wrote questions down, and I wrote Martha, too. Did you? I did. Yeah. So, psychically, it's, I was getting Martha. It's, it's here. You were getting Martha somewhere with it. Yeah. And you have the CVP? Uh, I'd have to get it. <laughs> I, wait a moment. Yeah, right here. Martha. Yeah. Will you show it to the camera? It's right here. Yeah. So now I'm curious to look through to see if there's a connection with Abraham Lincoln and a Martha. And Martha. I have it stamped at 7 minutes, 27 seconds. Well, like I said, I'm here in Bertha, but sometimes people will hear right. something different than what I'm hearing. Um, sometimes they may not even hear it when I play it back. You know, when right. you have the headphones on, you hear it clear. So we'll see, if, you know, we'll try and see if we'll hear uh, Bertha here. You can hear something in yeah. the... That's what he said. He hears the, the, the last part. Did you hear it? Where's the... Sound like Bertha to me. But. Yeah. But it's very odd that Martha... I had Martha come up twice. You had written Martha I on your paper, it. apparently, right. and then you said Martha. We have something the... Definitely something the on the recording, right. Right. because to me, my ears, I heard it with the headphones, I didn't make out Bertha, I didn't make out Martha, I heard, uh, the, the, yeah. you know, 
the second part of that, so I can't tell what it says the first part, if it's a birth or a Marth or what. Um, I think I think what's up, what's interesting too is let's go back to the beginning when you guys were doing your psychic sessions. Um, I had just happened to put the recorder on and set it on that table over there, and uh, what I got at 41 seconds, what it sounds like, is somebody saying, we were sick. So I'm going to play that, see if you all can hear it. Um, 41 seconds. I'll play it a little before. Yeah. It's either we were sick or are you sick. And what's interesting is somebody coughed. Yeah, I was talking about the lights at that point. But I can hear it. Right. So, Cheyenne, I, I know, I, what did you feel or, or anything with yours? I just... I don't go on, on feeling... I mean, if, if there's something that is bothersome to me. It makes me ill. But what I was feeling was getting connected like I lived here. And like I was going back in time and and joining the people that were, were here previously. And I visualized them. Like, come on, let's right. party. But, but you said you weren't able to check through your quarter yeah. No, I didn't have enough time. I'm slow. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Did you happen to run while she was recording? No. Okay, all right. So unfortunately, the only thing we have as yeah. of this moment is the story of how you right. accidentally said Martha yeah. had Martha written and I had Martha Yeah, I didn't through. even get through that session. Okay. Um, so that'll be curious to find out when you do. Right. Well, it's it's interesting with the sick part, too. Yeah. Because I've been here plenty of times, and I always feel connected to the angel room where Clara, right. is, you know, succumbed to uh, tuberculosis. And sometimes I feel like I'm always connecting with possibly her or uh, somebody who was sick. Right. Um, I always feel connected to Clara every time I come here. I talk to her like she, like she's right there with me, you know. Well, I think we've got time for kick here. Yes. Yeah. Let's cut, everybody, and we can transfer footage. Um, and if you want to just leave, like, this thing and just prop it up and leave okay. it. We'll go and transfer, and call it a, call it a cut. Yeah. Did you get all on the steam belt? Oh, yes, I got all on the steam belt. That's great. <laughs>
That's not, there's nothing on here about a first love before Mary Todd. Not on this, there's not. Where's, where's the one about uh, Nancy Hanks? You said it was on the thing about Nancy Hanks? No. Oh, no, it was on the thing from Washington back up. Yeah. That's not on here, though. Well, I got the cat ball down, and I got the dog ball down. Yeah. It's got a book in it. I